let's say I've got, oh, I've got to draw. I, my, my artwork is pretty poor here, okay? But let's say that driving on the highway, your blue car, okay, your flower blue car, you can remember that. <laughs> and here you are here, okay? And you're going straight, okay? The car's flat, okay? The car's pretty flat, little, okay? And when we start going around that curve to the left, the car wants to go straight. Straight, okay? And what happens is the car at that point starts to lean toward the outside. Now, if you have a nice Ferrari, it probably won't lean much, okay? But many other cars are softly suspended with springs and shock absorbers to give you a soft ride, okay? So if you're getting a nice soft ride, when you turn, that car might lean some. Lots of cars have other suspension parts in them. But then we're gonna squish the springs on this side, and the springs on this side stretch, okay? We're gonna press on this tire more, it's gonna squish out. Do you ever bounce a basketball? Why does it bounce back? Yeah, the rebound is because of the air inside. You got a point there. So the tire is ready to rebound, and the spring is ready to rebound, okay? And if we've been skidding that car, it's been going sideways, at the end of the skid, especially on dry pavement, so you don't get this as much when it's slipping, because uh, slippery stuff, because we don't get that uh, traction. But we still get a certain amount of loading to the outside wheels. And so at the end of the skid, the car's not been loading, it stops skidding, and it's ready to bounce back. And when it bounces back, if you've got your wheels pointed in the direction you want them to go, or steering it into the skid, <clears throat> when it bounces back, it ah! catapults you out into the bushes. And so that's why we call this correct is steering toward where you want to go. At the end of the skid, there's a moment when it's not doing anything, which we call the pause and we have to straighten it at the end, straight, which we call a recover. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Another thing, like my steering wheel, okay? <clears throat> when you and I, we were taught to do hand over hand steering, right? Okay, well hand over hand steering was great for my dad's car because it had a 17 inch steering wheel. It didn't have power steering and we didn't have airbags, okay? If you were to do this in your driver's test in Scandinavia, England, New Zealand, Australia, you'd flunk your test, really? okay? You would flunk your test and this is how they teach people how to drive in those countries and they require it. Both hands on the wheel, okay? Both hands on the wheel. Now, I've seen people try to steer with both hands on the wheel and do this. Or with one hand, do this. Which, um, anybody ever twist your arm when you were a kid? Yeah. Okay, bigger kids, you know, when you're little. Mm -hmm. um, well, this is a weak position, okay? Not only that, but your arm is across in front of the airbag. Yeah. Now, how does the airbag work? Well, it, it, I want you to say this to yourself. Your airbag will not go off unless your car is getting shorter. <laughs> That's really not funny, is it? <laughs> okay. It, it sounds like an oversimplification. But your airbag will not go off unless your car is crushing in the front. And when the car is crushing in the front, I hope you have your seatbelt on properly. I ride with people all the time who take that seatbelt and put it underneath their armpit. And I know you know, we've got all the forensic information that that can break your ribs and puncture your lungs. Does that sound bad? Okay, so it's gotta be across your sternum and your chest cavity, okay? It's gotta be snug around your hips. We know that people who have had their seatbelt up around their belly have ripped their intestines, okay? My bones are hard, my guts are soft, okay? Cinch that sucker up around your hips. You only need it once, right? 
Okay, how often do you put it on? All the time. All the time, but you only need it at one time. But the airbag itself <laughs> goes off. Okay. <laughs> well, this is the real thing. Okay. You think I'm scary? You ought to see an airbag go off, man. That sucker goes off explosively. Once you've been in an accident, that sound, <laughs> you, you, it's never. I mean, you, you can hear it from a mile away, and you'll know it's an accident. But at least once I'll you hear that the sound, airbag's coming. I don't know when you're gonna scream. <laughs> you will know when the airbag's coming? I yeah, doubt it. I have, I'll to, see what we're gonna hit from I have to doubt it. Because, you know, when that airbag goes off, you're not ready for it. There ain't nobody ready for it. Okay? You can't get ready for that sucker. Uh, because, it, because it does go off explosively with the force of a shotgun shell, and it stops before it gets to you. Now, if you're under five foot four, okay? <laughs> You might be a little close to that sucker, and when it goes off, because you want to reach those pedals, right? Okay. When it goes off, if you don't have the length of a piece of, you know, piece of uh, eight by eleven paper that would fit it lengthwise between you and the steering wheel, you're gonna get hurt. My sister burned her face because she was so close. Yep. Well, it, it, it's an explosive device. Like I said, a shotgun shell. It develops heat to do the expansion. And so that expansion wham, goes off, and hopefully it stops before it gets to you, and then pff, it lets out, you know, like falling into a pillow. The thing is, people think it's a soft pillow. It ain't a soft pillow. It's explosive force. So if you had your arm across the middle of it, people think that they'll break their nose or their wrist. What's right behind your eyes and your head? And if, you were, if, if I was in a boxing match with you, what would you want to do to my head? You want to hit it hard enough so you shake my brain. Okay. Well, this is the leading cause of internal head injuries in this country. Do you have any uh, clients that have internal head problems? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Um, I do. You're a social worker, right? Yeah, I, okay. I do. I have a couple. Yep. Yep. Well, it's not much different than falling when you're skiing or falling off a bicycle. Uh, you know, other internal head injuries uh, cause people to have unconsciousness. You can have vertigo. There, there are a lot of different uh, symptoms of this. But if you get your bell rung, you know that that you know that that boxer may not be the same after this next boxing match. Got hit too much in the face. Um, so what we think about is we got to have our hands on the opposite side of the wheel. If you want to turn to the right, you could push up and then pull down. And by the way, if you steer this way, have you only steered a half a turn? Okay, so your wheels only turn this much. Your steering, your, the wheels on the front of the car are on an uh, increasing ratio, you know, a gear ratio. Uh, and so when you turn the wheel half a turn, your wheels turn this much. The next half to turn, turn your wheels almost double. And that's because if, the, if it was too sensitive, people would be going down the interstate waiting back and forth, okay? So there's less steering on the first half turn. But a nanosecond isn't very long, right? You pretty quick with your hands? Yeah. Okay, I've never checked on that, but uh, okay. But if you took a nanosecond to reach to the top of the wheel, pull down, reach to the bottom of the wheel, push up, haven't you steered a whole turn and never crossed your hands across the middle? Okay. And this is the way they require you to steer in England or, you know, the UK or, or Germany or, you know, most of the countries, most of the developed countries around the world. Um, I, it was interesting because I went to Dubai a while back, a long time ago, before 9-11, and uh, I couldn't get people to wear their seatbelts. How come you don't wear your seatbelt? Well, <clears throat> if Allah's going to get you, he's going to get you. It's, all, it's up to faith. Until one of the... Uh, what do they call it? Emir, you know, it's in the Emirates. Uh, one of the kids in the family got killed in a car crash, and all of a sudden, we're going to wear our seatbelts. They decided that they could, you know, overrule uh, uh, the religious thinking. But anyways, your steering wheel, okay? How to steer? Now, uh, can you play a piano? Barely. Okay, barely. Well, you need more practice, okay? Well, the same thing is going to happen, especially for the more experienced drivers here, because we've evolved our own routine, okay? 
our own routine is getting acclimated to our own way of doing things. So if you've been a hand over hand steer, if you've been a, somebody who palmed the wheel, they don't put the knob on there anymore for the Elvis knob. Um, but uh, you know, you, you're probably going to do the same thing forever, okay? Unless you try to make yourself do something else, okay? I've, you know, everybody's a creature of habit, but it takes a while to say, I'm driving to the grocery store, I'm going to steer this way, okay? I'm driving to the daycare, I'm going to steer this way. So if you make yourself learn something, you would be a better piano player if, and, and you can try this all you want, all today. And maybe it'll work for you today. Uh, maybe it'll feel alien, unusual to you. But um, if, you, uh, if you try it today, maybe you can do it the rest of your life. Okay? But unless you try, it ain't gonna happen. Okay? And very much like, uh, do, you, do you do baby steps with your clientele and your social work? You want them to 